Let's do some uh, tech related news since the real world depresses the living shit out of me, including net neutrality. AMD five days ago quietly launched some Radeon graphics cards, the RX 560s, with uh, much lower specs. Like the original stream processors were like 1024, right? And AMD cut them down to 896 stream processors. What the fuck is this? I don't know. Now, PC Gamer and others say that it's easy to spot the differences because of the slight different model names, but now some regular Radeon 560 cards are shipping with downgraded parts. It's not that easy to notice the model name. Who's gonna really look at that? Is there like a version that says RX 560, 896 stream processor edition? Because I was looking at these uh, graphics cards for a friend who has a uh, small pre-built, you know, sort of office PC and she's been using, God help us all, the Intel integrated graphics to play Overwatch. It's just like, all right, we gotta find like some sort of small form factor GPU. And this came out and I was just like, you gotta be shitting me, AMD. So now you have to do a little extra looking to make sure you don't grab the wrong one. And AMD said absolutely nothing about this until they got caught. Then like 24 to 48 hours later, AMD immediately came out and said, Ah, oh, we're sorry if we caused any confusion. I mean, literally, that was one of the tweets on my Twitter feed. I'm too lazy to hunt it down simply because I don't care enough. It's correct that the 14 compute units of the 896 stream processors and the 16 compute units of the 1024 stream processor versions of the RX 560 are available. We noticed the 14 CU unit version this summer and provided onboard partners in the market with more RX 500 series options. It's come to our attention that certain onboard partners and retail websites, no clear delineation between the two variants. We're taking immediate steps to remedy this. We're working with all onboard channel partners to make sure the product description and names clarify the CU count so the gamers and consumers know exactly what they are buying. We apologize for the confusion this may have caused. Okay, so maybe it wasn't entirely AMD's fault from judging from this statement. Cat, get your claws out of my expensive fucking mouse pad. Is there a price difference? I fucking hope so. I mean, really, you, there's a price difference when there's a boost in VRAM for the goddamn graphics card. Well, not long after AMD's 560 debacle, Nvidia did what Nvidia always does. Completely and utterly comes out and shits on AMD by putting out the Titan V Volta GPU. As soon as it dropped, uh, most of the computer tech site pretty much put up sensational headlines. The Titan V is out and it's $3,000. And immediately my reaction was, what the fuck was this? Now, after looking at the paper launch of the Titan V, looking at everything it has to offer, it seemed like a monster compared to its original counterpart. But you also have to keep in mind that this graphics card is made for data centers with the transistor cord latent with hardware configuration designed to optimize deep learning tasks. You wouldn't buy this graphics card to play Destiny 2. Well, you wouldn't put a donkey in a Kentucky Derby, would you? <laughs> well, this graphics card was built for data scientists and data centers in mind. Seems like such a monster to be able to do something in gaming. I mean, this is kind of like the unchained consumer version. Because I assure you, whatever comes out after this, Volta-wise, for the 1080, or, oh, sorry, for the 2080 or 1180, or the 2080 Ti or 1180 Ti, will be a very cut-down version of this graphics card. And it will most likely use HBM2. Well, the high-end ones. Or maybe they all will. Because if you look at the die size for this uh, GPU, the processor size, whatever the hell you want to call it, this thing is huge. It really is. It's 815 millimeters squared. It's bigger than the uh, Fury, if you remember. Which, if you Google it, is around 600 millimeters. Due to the sheer size, normal VRAM like GDDR5 or GDDR5X, I don't think would fit. Now, I know I'm not even getting into the part I wanted to talk about, but I just figured I'd let people know about that. So most likely this will rock HBM2. Maybe there's a possibility it'll use the new GDDR5X, no, no, the new GDDR6 RAM, which is coming out in 2018. There's a shot that could be on graphics cards or maybe the lower end Volta graphics cards, but who the hell knows because I've never seen GDDR6 personally. So anyway, people with deep pockets ran out and immediately bought this graphics card. And of course, 
they ran it for gaming. But when you look at it for gaming, it's not really that impressive at all. At all. Like, it barely beats a 1080 Ti in most scenarios. Actually, no, at Firestrike Ultra, the 1080 Ti beats the Titan V. So there you go. Superposition 8K, not so close. Time Spy, and the Titan V has 2000 on it. And in Superposition 1080p Extreme, 3100, I'd say. So, not exactly blowing the world off. I'd say that's a 15, a 12 to 15 percent performance delta in the favor of the Volta Titan card. Not exactly huge. This graphics card processor was designed to service the high-end prosumer market, and it will be the first Titan series GPU that makes the use of HBM2 memory at this time. Full speculations of this GPU are unknown, though early reports have stated that this GPU will be making use of NVIDIA's GV100 GPU core and 12 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. If the report is accurate, this means that the GV100 GPU will be using three stack HBM2 memory and not the full four stacks that the NVIDIA GV100 GPU is capable of supporting, showing that this ultra high cost GPU isn't even the best that NVIDIA's G1, GV100 core is capable of. So reading that, you sit there and go, wow. And when you see that the GPU is powered by 110 teraflops of deep learning horsepower nine times its predecessor, you once to go, go, wow. But this is for researchers and scientists and so on. And in all honesty, people still, the Titan V is the first consumer product with 5,120 CUDA cores enabled. This is also the first gaming capable graphics card from NVIDIA with HBM2 memory on board. I guess gaming capable in the sense of it can play games, but it's not really a graphics card for gaming. The benchmarks results that were published a few days ago appear to have 110 to 130 megahertz higher clock speeds in the standard Titan V frequency that increase maximum theoretical bandwidth to 752 gigabytes. But when you look at the benchmarks for, you know, Time Spy and all the other garbage, it's not exactly burning up the world. It's not that far ahead of the Titan, I mean the 1080 Ti and the previous Titan. Once again, this is a prosumer car. And I also come to the sort of thought process of, yeah, it's prosumer, but if this is what it's doing here, then we probably shouldn't expect too much out of it. Now, remember when AMD launched the uh, Vega Frontier Edition and Founders Edition graphics cards? And everybody's like, it's going to kill the NVIDIA Titan or 1080 Ti, whatever the fuck. And it came out, they put game benchmarks on it, and it underperformed incredibly. And everyone was like, what the fuck is this? This isn't right. Someone's doing something wrong. And then there were the other people who were sitting there going, you're all fucking stupid. It's a professional graphics card. Wait until the Vega, the RX Vega comes out. Then the RX Vega is going to kill the 1080 Ti and the 1080. And then the RX Vega came out and it performed the ex almost identically to the fucking Founders Edition. Whoa! Somebody! Oh! He needs some milk! On the other side of the spectrum, there are many rumors already stating this a while ago that the Volta graphics cards were never meant to be a consumer product in terms of gaming. So we can't expect too much. Uh, AMD's Ryzen 2 is set for March 2018, launching on 12 nanometer and supports higher clock speeds and memory clock speeds. AMD's next generation Ryzen 2 CPUs are set to debut in the first quarter of 2018, the new lineup compromises of the 2000 series Ryzen 7, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 3. 2000 microprocessors is said to bring higher clock speeds and better overclockability uh, to the table in addition to support the faster DDR4 RAM. AMD's Ryzen 2 Pinnacle Ridge. Uh, so basically, the Pinnacle Ridge Ryzen 7 is set to hit February. So I guess we got two more months to go. And it'll be followed by the Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 in March. And I think, uh, Depending on what Ryzen 2 is doing, I might be willing to jump to that, but we'll see between the new Ryzen chip and the new Intel chip and whichever one has the best uh, ability for workstation and gaming, because I do both, then that'll probably be the one I hop on, because uh, I'm dying to update my rig. The new chip will be manufactured using Global Foundry's 12 nanometer leading performance processor nodes and will feature AMD's improved Zen Plus CPU microarchitecture. These parts will go up against Intel's upcoming 9000 series. 
with uh, the sources at our WCCF Tech expecting a Junus next year launch for Intel's 9000 series units to bring 8 cores to the mainstream for the very first time. Well, 8 cores to the mainstream for the first time for Intel. And will certainly offer stiffer competition to Ryzen than Coffee Lake has, which has been subject to significant shortages that have dragged out for months. So this explains why Intel was uh, opening a new workplace in China because Intel originally only made its CPUs in Malaysia so they opened a new place in China to sort of meet the demand and the shortages and they swear up and down there will be absolutely no differences between the two CPUs and as I said before that is yet to remain to be seen. Uh, the new processors are also said to support the higher DDR4 memory frequency. At least that's what some folks have been whispering into the ears of WCCF Tech editors. This is likely due to the performance and power improvements on 12LP brings to the table's low power and mobile variants. Pinnacle Ridge processors are expected to debut around April, uh, and second generation Ryzen Pro parts are set to come out in May. Well, the CPU market does look uh, good, in all honesty. Next year should be quite interesting. The 9th generation Intel CPUs with the rumored 8 core i7, which I'm personally looking forward to. And I've been hearing for a long time that Ryzen 2 will be sort of like the real test for Ryzen because the original Ryzen launch was the worst case scenario according to AMD. And it did so amazingly well that Ryzen 2 will probably blow our balls off, supposedly. As far as graphics cards go, uh, Andy supposedly gonna have Vega 2 out at around the end of the summer. But you know, I'm shrugging right now because I have a strong feeling that like the GeForce GTX, you know, 20 series, whatever, or 11 series, whatever the fucking Nvidia decides to call the next generation Volta graphics cards for gaming will probably drop it around June, I'm gonna guess. You know, I just have a feeling that'll be the time. I have, this is all speculation, I have no sort of insight into the gaming community or the tech community. Nobody tells me jack shit. But, uh, yeah, honestly, there'll probably be no real competition for Volta. I'm really hoping that it's more power than just 15% over the 1080 Ti for the Titan variant, because if that's the case, it just really makes you sit there and go, well, what's the point? But then again, since Nvidia really has no one to compete with them, what does it matter anyway? Because once Nvidia puts out a new graphics card, you know people are going to go buy it because it's the new Nvidia graphics card. It's almost like the new Jordan sneakers. They come out, people buy them. And Pascal did seem like a leap forward over Maxwell. And Volta was supposed to be a huge leap to the point of where the 2080 or 1180 was supposed to be the 4K graphics card that did it all full, you know, ultra settings, 60 FPS by itself, single card. But it doesn't seem too impressive right now, you know, from these little things. But once again, business related graphic card not for ship munchers like me and AMD has nothing for them so they have no competition they have no reason to rush anything hell they probably have no reason to try they could have sat there and said yeah we fucked up some shit it's only 15 percent faster than pascal and they'll sit there and go good now our graphics cards are 45 percent faster than vega well vega 2 is coming out at the end of august who gives a shit great and then we'll just be 25 percent faster whatever well that's going to do it for me on this video because it's just the tech related stuff uh, rate, comment, subscribe, so choose to, if not, to hell with it. Just know that every one of you that follows me, my voice gets louder in industry. <sighs> Pretty much composed of paid shills. And, uh, yes men, fanboys, etc. I'm in nobody's pocket. You know, the only people that give a shit about me is the Chinese market when it comes to keyboards. I mean, that is it. They're the only ones that, like, give some semblance of a shit about me. Probably because I'm the only one who will check out their stuff.